Well, hey there. I'm Jay. Welcome to my booth. Prepping your audiobook manuscript is an important step in the audiobook production process before you get in the booth and record the darn thing. So I'm going to walk you through how I prep my manuscripts and some of the tools that I use that make my life a little bit easier in that journey, in case it's helpful for you as well. Before I start, however, if you have any questions about this or anything else voiceover related, you're always welcome to drop me a line below or reach out directly via my website, where I've also got some one-on-one -on -one coaching available, if that's your thing. Uh, so the first step in prepping your manuscript is just to read the darn thing. I do that on two different types of devices. The first is simply a tablet, good old iPad, and the other, sometimes I'll export the PDF to a Kindle or e-reader or something like that, just so it's easier on the eyes and easier for me to focus after a long day staring at a computer screen. Uh, but more often than not, I'm reading on my tablet, particularly because the software that I can use on it makes annotation really easy and fluid. The two softwares that I use are Adobe Acrobat, because it's part of the whole Adobe Creative Suite and it's readily available to me. And the other that I'm quite fond of is PDF Expert. It's only about 10 bucks, I think. And the annotation on it is really, really intuitive and fluid. So I can highlight words as I go through, underline stuff. I can write little notes to myself in the margin. I can even color code my highlighting if I feel the need for something like that. And so all of that's really helpful. And both of the softwares catalog all of the uh, annotations and highlights that you put in a sort of compendium along the side here, which makes it really, really great for at the end of your preparation of the manuscript, you can go through and just review everything before you dive into a recording session. And that brings me to my next point. When I'm reading through, what kind of stuff am I marking up? What kind of stuff am I looking for? The first, and this is very fiction specific, uh, nonfiction is kind of a different beast. So for most of this video, we're talking about fiction. But the first is just plot. What's going on in the book? And for me, I don't really make too many notes about the plot. And that's just because the way my mind works, the way I ingest stories, and then the way that the stories are recalled by my memory as I go back through in the actual recording and narration of them, it comes back to me pretty easily. However, some of my colleagues, what they'll do is at the beginning of a chapter, they'll just make a note to themselves at the top of a page of what kind of characters are going to show up and also maybe just some cues as to what's going to happen in the chapter. This way they can prime themselves and prep for the chapter before diving in as to sort of what's going to happen, like big battle scene incoming, intimate steamy romance sequence coming up. Uh, and they can maybe listen to the character samples that they've pre-recorded or something like that before getting into the chapter. So plot, the next thing is word pronunciations. The first are words in the human language, whatever language you're narrating in, for me that's English, that you either don't know or words that you're not sure how they're pronounced. Both, if there's any doubt in your mind, look it up beforehand. And then for me, I'll either write the phonetic pronunciation on the side of the page or just highlight the word and sometimes put like a link to a pronunciation page, either YouTube or something like that. Or on PDF Expert, another reason why I like it, is on the iPad, you can just highlight the word and it gives you a little speak option. Instinctual. Which, granted, it's an AI voice, so you might want to double check it if it's a complex word. But for the majority of uh, standard English words, it's pretty on point, which is just a helpful way to look it up. But for things like molecular compounds or uh, chemical things, I don't know. Those are helpful to look up beforehand. Aside from real words, made up words. If there's a word that the author has created for their word, be it a place, name, object, magical substance or whatever, Make note of it, and uh, I either highlight in my manuscript or I'll make a little list outside of the manuscript. And at the end of the reading, I'll send that list to either the publisher, the producer of the audiobook, or the author themselves 
and ask, hey, can you just verify if any of these are pronounced in a particular way, aside from just the way that they would be pronounced? Even if you're pretty sure you know the way it would be said, double check, because the last thing you want is when you're done recording, the author listens to it and says, hey, uh, you said the main character's name with a hard A, and it's actually a soft A, uh, so we're gonna need you to re-record the main character's name. That's happened to colleagues of mine. It is a absolute nightmare, and you don't want it to happen to you. So always, always, always double check the pronunciation of things before you jump in. If not to save you time and money, but also just to make your narration more fluid because you don't want to stop and start checking pronunciation. And then the final thing that I'm looking for as I read through my manuscripts are character notes. I'm looking for uh, the character's personality, the way they behave, the way they feel about other characters, their motivations, their uh, dreams, desires. You're essentially acting as all of these characters. So you want to pick up as much information about them as you can. So their personality, also their physical attributes. If they're a big character, if they're a meek character, if they're a weak character, if they're burly. Now, it's important not to make assumptions about their vocal quality based off of their physical appearance or uh, attributes. But those can be clues as to how you perform them at the end of the day if uh, in terms of especially differentiating your differentiating your characters between each other. If you've got two bouncers and one is described as big or small, you can uh, make decisions off of that. Uh, and it can also be fun in that to play against what maybe someone would think if they hear he was a big, huge guy, but he's got, uh, Mike Tyson-esque voice or something like that. It, it subverts expectations and makes your narration that much more compelling and honestly real and grounded if you're not just making the easy choice, the stereotypical choice as it were. And then of course the final thing are the vocal qualities of your characters. If it's noted at any point, just highlight it or Again, I'll make a cast list of my characters in a separate notebook. And as I go through, if they are described as having a deep voice, gravelly voice, any sort of adjective, a airy voice, uh, that's a clue as to how you should probably perform them. And especially if they've got an accent. And the reason why I find making a cast list really helpful as I go along, if two characters have sort of different plot lines as they're going through the book, and they're kind of running parallel to each other or in different worlds, but then midway or towards the end of the book, they come together. If at the beginning of the book, you've chosen to voice them in a similar way, that can make it difficult when they come together at the end of the book. So noting how the characters move through the story can be helpful in terms of making your vocal choices uh, at the end of the day. Even if they're both described as having similar voices or similar personalities, whatever, Making sure that they sound different if they have a scene together, especially, is important. And then the last note that I'll make regarding characters is dialogue in the story. If there's a specific way a character says a line, he grumbled, he whined, she uh, sighed, things like that. Those can be clues as to how you deliver the line. And so highlighting those for me helps to direct my eye to that as I'm reading through the manuscript. And I can essentially get the line reading right the first time instead of saying, aha, she screamed. <laughs> Something like that. You don't want to have to go back and re-record. So things like that I'll highlight. And then if there's a scene where there's uh, five, six characters having a cross conversation, Occasionally, I'll color code the character's dialogue. So Gabriel gets green, Emma gets red, Jason gets purple. And that way I can easily shift between the character voices without having to do a mental gymnastics as I'm narrating. I just can say green, red, and shift my voice accordingly. Uh, so those are the things that I do in noting up my manuscripts. If there are any things that you do that help you out, I would love to hear about them. Let me know down below because I'm always looking to pick up some new tips. And until the next one of these, be well and I'll see you there. Toodles. <laughs>